In this five minute lecture, I want to distinguish between several terms that are all too often used as if interchangeable in the study of sport, namely physical activity, exercise and sport. And because most sport is leisure sport, I'll also offer a definition of leisure. The term physical activity tends to be interpreted in two quite different ways in relation to sport. For those such as exercise physiologists concerned with fitness and health, physical activity is taken to mean bodily movement produced by skeletal muscles resulting in the expenditure of energy, in other words being physically active. For those concerned simply with engagement in sport, sociologists for example, the term physical activity is often used in a context that implies participation and in particular participation in less competitive or at least more recreational activities. Two senses of the term physical activity are to be found in the vast body of research into the health and fitness of people over the last 50 years or so. Concern with levels of physical activity in the sense of levels of energy expenditure is often juxtaposed with physical activity in terms of levels, rates and frequencies of participation. The term exercise can be considered a subset of physical activity and is taken to mean planned and structured physical activity. Exercise is said to be planned in the sense of being deliberate and structured in having a predetermined shape, form and limits. Both features are found in activities such as a 5k run, performing a particular number of sets and repetitions of various gym activities or playing games of football, badminton and the like. Sport can usually be considered a subset of exercise. As far as sociologists are concerned, the various practices typically labelled sport tend to display certain common features and in particular competition, physical vigour and institutionalisation. By institutionalisation we mean when something such as the game of football takes on the characteristics of a structured, well organised and established system. Some would add a fourth component, physical skills, to the triumvirate of competition, physical vigour and institutionalisation. For sociology studying sports participation, however, the term sport is often used in a more general sense to incorporate not only competitive game contests such as rugby, hockey, basketball and so on, but also less competitive, less organised recreational versions of these sports, as well as more recreationally oriented activities often referred to as lifestyle sports, swimming, aerobics, cycling, all forms of boarding and blading, cheerleading, parkour and so forth. These can be recreational in the sense of being motivated by a desire to refresh, renew or reinvigorate oneself through physical activity and exercise. While elite sport can be understood as a branch of the entertainment industry, for most people most of the time, participatory sport is leisure sport. There are two broad ways of defining leisure, either as a residue of time or as an experience. The first definition is commonplace in government and commercial surveys, as well as sociological studies and conceptualizes leisure as time left over after work and obligatory activities such as domestic responsibilities, family commitments and personal hygiene in which people are relatively free to choose what they do as well as how they do it. In other words, spare time. Defining leisure in terms of free time and free choice has the obvious benefit of coinciding with ordinary everyday uses of the term while allowing for measurement of what people actually do with their time when they're free to choose. For example, at the end of the school day when homework and chores have been completed and during weekends and holidays. The second approach defines leisure in terms of the quality of experiences. In effect, whether or not leisure involves intrinsic satisfaction and self-realisation. There are two major problems with this kind of subjective definition of leisure. First, it's difficult to identify and measure, not least because the notion of leisure as a quality experience doesn't match the general public's everyday understanding of what's meant by the term as illustrated in the commonplace tendency for people to refer to just killing time in their leisure. And this points to the second problem with experiential definitions. A good deal of what people consider to be leisure is mundane and anything but a quality experience. All that said, time use studies nowadays tend to capture not just what people do, where, when and with whom, but also how they experience activities and situations. All in all then, while there's a tendency to use the terms physical activity, exercise and sport interchangeably, they are most used to anyone studying sport when they're used specifically and with the aforementioned differences in mind.